Comet, you're the only mercenary pilots on base at the moment, so this is your mission effective immediately. A few hours ago, the remnants of Cascadia's Coast Guard was able to board... Mm -hmm. Thank <laughs> you. 
made it to Allied waters safe and sound. Its repair and refit will ensure that we have the advantage near the coasts and at sea as long as it's afloat. Captain Woodward extends his regards and has forwarded you some items he has recovered from the former captain's quarters, most chiefly a bottle of whiskey. Stand by for your next sortie. advantages that the Federation has over Cascadia is their absolute control and logistics routes. Factories and states that we can't even touch are pumping out equipment and supplies for them at a pace we'll never be able to match. However, they all have to get in the country somehow. The Federation supply train is one carried out mostly by air, now that the eminent domain is intercepting cargo ships coming into Federation ports. Civilian traffic has remained largely the same thanks to Federation communication protocols. The reality of this conflict has been kept hidden in courtesy of the Solana communication facility in the Aitor Desert. This mission is as follows. Mercenary and Allied pilots will be dispatched to various points along the airways, knocking out Federation logistics aircraft and grinding their resupply efforts to a halt. By striking in broad daylight, we can openly challenge the Federation when they think they're safe. Remember, it's imperative that no civilians are harmed in this operation, so engage. Let's go, Monarch. I'd like to touch down before lunch.
location.
Intercept operation was a success. Worldwide, news is breaking out about the Independence Force's calculated and precise presence on the international stage. No civilian casualties have been reported, and the Federation, while dealing with the disruption of their air train, have to contend with international response to the war. Hitman 1, your flight was the most successful of these intercepts, and the Federation is currently scrambling to find alternative ways to maintain logistics. This is an op just for you. You know I don't like admitting this, but mercenary pilots in this world are among some of the best. They get more air time, more time on target, than any of us national pilots outside of the periphery. In truth, you get the glamour we all thought fighter pilots were supposed to have when signing up to the academy. Of that, you're making five times what I make in a year. I wonder if that's why you went private, but... I don't think you're the type to give that answer. Not to me, anyway. What I'm trying to say is, you're capable. More capable than most, getting this far in. And because of that, we need you on deck for a one-man mission. Cascadia's southeastern deserts hosts the Solana Communication Array. It's a Federation and Cascadian telecom venture meant to expand Cascadia's networking capability, regardless of any thermal interference that traditionally plagues long-range communications. With that facility, communications between various Federation units are streamlined, while limiting, jamming, and interrupting our own. Nothing to say of the censorship abilities that are used to enforce the civilian information flow. This is one of the Independence Force's top targets. However, it's been outside our strike range until now. Due to its distance from our front lines, no fuel can be wasted dodging or circumventing Federation anti-air systems en route. In short, we're sending you alone to clear up the most disruptive defense systems before we engage in a full-scale operation to knock out the facility. You will insert into the Kaohord defense region in the Raver Mountains and take out all critical defense systems under cover of night. The defense system is calibrated for mass aerial strikes, but a lone aircraft flying relatively level with the mountains should be able to slip through and take them out. Dismissed. I'm going to have a sad moment about how I'm going to have a little bit of a sad moment. 
I feel bad, Monarch, for making you come with us tomorrow to hit that communication facility. Especially after what you pulled off tonight, single-handedly. Though that was one hell of a thing you did. And I got a feeling Operation Blackout will meet you on point. We have a straight shot to get to the And, with any luck, we'll have fuel to spare for the fight. Sicario is mobilizing en masse tomorrow morning. Get some sleep. This war isn't gonna win itself. There's nothing much I need to say to you, Sicario. Operation Blackout will be conducted entirely by you. I cannot, however, express enough how important this strike is. Commander, you have the floor. The Ator Desert has hosted the Solana Communication Array for the greater part of the decade. It was a Federation project in country that was meant to boost and maintain the communications infrastructure of Cascadia. However, during the war, it has served as a jamming and communication facility. The very basis of a unified command structure is built on the pillars of communication. If we take out this facility, it'll be like yanking the rug out right from beneath their feet. The facility is heavily defended, hosting an airbase and a ground garrison on its own. The only way we're getting boots on the ground is via a mass airdrop, followed by relentless close air support from our fighter group until the entire place is overrun. It's as simple as that. Now normally, the Independence Force would be offering some assistance, but they can't afford that now. 
Under any other pretense, this is a suicide mission. Even with the air corridor Monarch cleared up, there's only enough fuel for a one-way trip. So the only way we're coming back is if we take the adjoining airbase after we hit the facility. Expect heavy air and ground resistance. Fill boxes, tanks, AA, airships, the whole shebang. If we pull this off, well, let's just say we'll be handsomely rewarded. Gold or glory, gentlemen. Get to your planes. The Cascadians call this place the Devil's Sandbox. So what does that mean if we're the ones playing in it, huh? <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. 
Since the destruction of the Solana communication relay, the Federation has been disorganized and subject to our own electronic warfare countermeasures. It is because of this, our first conventional victories up and down the front lines are being reported, and the Federation is dealing with losses it hasn't had to deal with in decades. Recently, in order to improve individual unit combat effectiveness, the Federation has been discharging Cascadian manned units and replaced them with soldiers who aren't nationals. Subsequently, many of our once misguided countrymen have defected and are providing us with invaluable intel and manpower. Earlier today, one of our patrols caught a group of transports using the cover of an Arctic storm to get unorganized and underpowered Federation units out of Cascadia, probably to regroup and redeploy later. The patrol engaged, and the Federation sent more fighters to cover them. Seeing as these transports represent the bulk of Federation forces who have experience fighting us, we did not want them to regroup, so we sent more reinforcements. Squadron leaders and base commanders on both their side and ours have been escalating force deployment ever since combat began. High-profile squadrons and our forces and theirs are currently present. The snowball effect, however, has inadvertently created by all accounts what is turning out to be the most expansive aerial battle in the war thus far, and is steadily falling out of control. We cannot let the Federation have any more of their forces escape and regroup, even if it means the largest furball in history.
Yeah. Right. 